Hi, and welcome to Learn From the Experts, presented by the Women Business Owners Alliance. The WBOA consists of women entrepreneurs. We have a membership of over 100 members. The business women that you will see on our program are all members of the WBOA and are excited to share their expertise and knowledge with our viewers. So sit back, relax, while they wow you with their willingness to share. My name is Carlene Hoffman and I'm from The Clutter Doctor and I'm here today with my co-host. Hi, I'm Kim Shagnon from Kim's Upholstery. I'd like to introduce you to our guests today. We have Deborah Whitford from Viridian and we have Susan King from 31 Gifts in Alasta. Hi ladies, welcome. Oh, hello. Hello. Thank you. So you're here today to talk to us about direct sales. So first off, if you could give us a, a description or a definition of what direct sales is okay. or means. Yeah. Well, direct sales, otherwise known as network marketing, is a business model that in, um, employs a large network of independent distributors to move a you know, service or a product through face-to-face -face interaction with customers. So. And Sue, what's your take on that? Um, same thing, I would say that direct sales from my angle, we do more of a party plan. So our emphasis is on the gathering of women together to sell a product and to network and to get to know each other. And what are the advantages of being in a direct sales position? Well, I, I really like the time, freedom, and flexibility. I mean, you can work, um, you know, when, where, for as short a time, for as long a time as you want. Um, we don't really have snow days, <laughs> which has been a real advantage, obviously, with this winter. Um, so I, I really like that. Um, I think also the, the income potential, um, the monthly income potential. I mean, with a moderate amount of work, and um, uh, you, could, you can earn enough income maybe to make a car payment, to make a mortgage payment. Um, and if you're really to work, willing to work at it more seriously, you can make a full-time income at this. So that's really a great advantage. And in direct sales, a lot of times we say that you're in business um, for yourself, but not by yourself. So one of the great advantages is there's a whole lot of um, marketing materials already made up for you. You don't have to design things from scratch. You have a whole company that you can um, rely on for those types of things. Um, in addition, it's really easy to uh, advance your career when you want to do it, as opposed to if you work in the corporate world when someone else says, okay, it's time for you to you know, have a raise or um, move up the company ladder. In direct sales, a lot of that's reliant on you, and it's usually pretty easy to do. So what type of a person would be suitable for direct sales? Um, I think anyone looking for another stream of income who, who likes networking with people, who likes to meet new people. Um, I think there's a big advantage to that. A lot of network marketing um, is done part-time around an, an already either a busy life for a, for a woman with small children or for people in corporate America who are looking for a, another stream of income. A lot of people um, make this part of their, their uh, retirement plan. So it really allows, we, we talk about it in the company that I work for, is we have, um, you know, a, a, a turnkey plan for busy, pro pro for busy professionals. And that's kind of the way we market, it, you know. That. So, you know, that's the kind of person I think that would be interested in it. I'd also say that one of the myths is that you have to be, like, good at speaking in front of people. Right. Um, because one of the things that you'll find is it's really just a very small group of people and if you have a passion for the product or the service that you're offering it really is just coming from your heart right. and it's really just like being with a group of friends much right. like we're doing here so um, yeah. it's kind of a myth that you have to you know be good at public speaking you do not I never even thought of I, that's such a great idea Kim I never even thought of you know um, you're at retirement age and maybe this might yeah, be exactly. something how, how neat is that right yeah, yeah you're on I your like own that. time make your own schedule yeah, yeah. So, so let's get down to the nitty-gritty so let's say um, I think that I might be a candidate for direct sales so how how, how does this all you know how do you look into it, pick a find company. it, pick the company, mm. you know, all that jazz. All that jazz. Well, I think the first thing, you need to actually like the product or service that you're, cons you know, you're considering. You need okay. to have a passion for it. Um, you also want to consider um, is, is, the, is the product that you might be considering price to sell? Is it something you could see yourself selling? Um, is it something that a typical customer would want or need? So that's a f I think that's a, the first um, measure. 
And then I think you need to look um, at, at the company itself. Is it reputable? How long has it been in business? Um, this you can research on the internet. Um, you can, you can ask about the management team and the leadership team. Um, one of the good barometers, there's an, a trade association, a national trade association called um, the Direct, Direct Sales Association, or DSA. And I would look for a company that is a member of that because, okay. they, yeah, because they have a really high code of ethics. In order to, to maintain your membership in DSA, you have to really um, have the best business practices, have good customer service. So I, I would look for a company that's a member of the DSA. Another thing is, if you're dealing with a company that sells a product, like I do, um, you want to know, like, what's your upfront investment? What are you getting for that investment? Um, also, how often does do the products change, if they change? And, you know, how oh, much more investment yeah. is that going to require of you? Yeah. Right. So you want to balance having something new and fresh to show um, at your parties and things like that with, you know, how much is it going to cost me? And most direct sales companies will have... Um, ample opportunity for you to invest in the product. Either they'll give it to you because they'll incentivize you to, to earn it, um, or they'll make a deal. They'll be like, you know, you can get this $300 worth of product and it'll cost you $40. So, mm -hmm. um, but those are the, some of the other things you want to think about. Yeah. So make sure that they're a part of the DSA, right. and then um, you need to make sure that they're a reputable company, and you would do that by looking on the internet and or seeing talking if there's to any people, yeah, talking to other other distributors and see what you know how they feel about the company. Um, the other thing is you want to have a company that has really gives good support. Now Sue mentioned about yeah. marketing okay. materials. That's right. really important. Um, does the company give you training? What kind oh. of training is involved, and um, you know, do they have a great website? Is the is it a professionally designed website? Is it easy to use? Um, does do the tools on the website allow you to track sales and customers? Because you're in business by yourself, and are those those tools and resources free, or or, is, or for a small yeah. investment? Are you going to be you know paying a lot of money to, to to have all these additional things? So I think that's important. That as was well. the next thing coming out of my mouth was is <laughs> is that stuff for free? Do the companies offer um, the marketing materials for free, or do you have to pay for that? It depends on it the depends company. It depends on the company. Depends on the company. Exactly. Usually, there's a small investment involved after you're initially in. So, for instance, like catalogs might cost sixty cents a piece, but you know, nowhere can you get like a forty-eight page catalog for sixty cents right. on your own. You know, yeah. doing that your own, you have to order in huge quantities, and that's the advantage because you've got them ordering huge quantities because usually there's consultants across the country. Um, and to tag on to what Deborah said about um, corporate training, you also want to look at, at least with party plans, usually you sign up, you have a direct relationship with the person with whom you sign up. So you want to know, you know, where is that person at in the company? Are they going to offer me training or the person above them? Can they offer me specialized training? Um, who do I go to if I have a question or a problem or um, you know, is there a presence on Facebook? You know, is there a forum for me to ask questions of other consultants in similar situations? All those things are good to look at. Now, the companies that you both work for, do they have like territory limits? Like you've got a certain area that's oh, just yeah, you, or can you have question. multiple people in the same, selling the same product in the same territory? Excellent question. And for all of the direct sales companies that I've ever been involved in, the answer is there are no territories. You mm -hmm. are free to sign up people wherever you know them and meet them and form a relationship mm -hmm. with them. Yeah. And thanks to the internet, I mean, it's easier than ever yeah. to do that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's one of the advantages. I, I think that um, network marketing has expanded exponentially since social social media because, you know, we talk about in direct sales and network marketing, we talk about our warm market, you know, mm -hmm. our friends, our acquaintances, our acquaintances, and their friends, and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, suddenly your friends are may, maybe people you've never met, but you've, you've come to know and trust them because of your online relationships. So I think that's really helped um, the growth of, in fact, this is an interesting statistic. Um, network marketing is a $178 billion a year industry. And just to put well, that in perspective, the National Football League is only a $9 billion industry. <laughs> <laughs> so wow, now I've decided that I'm going to go with the lemon company. I'm <laughs> going to sell lemons. And I've done my research to check the DSA. I found out that the lemon company is very reputable. And I like their background. Um, they provide some marketing material. But how do you then go and get your business up and going? So what, what kinds of things do you do to um, meet some people, find some clients, get your product out there? 
We always say you start with uh, the people who you know best and first, so your friends, relatives, acquaintances. Um, we'd encourage you to call them and tell them that you're so excited, you've joined the lemon company and you can't wait to show them the best lemons they've ever seen. Um, and you would do, in my business, you would have a party. You know, you'd ask a hostess to have a party. One of the advantages of being a hostess is that you get free stuff and half price stuff and all the cool lemon things that no one else at the party can get, just special hostess lemons. So um, from there, we ask you to then, and that hostess will invite her friends and hopefully invite people that you don't know. So the big thing mm -hmm. is to try to get out of your circle as soon as possible because once all the people that know and love you have your product or have partied with you, then you want to try to keep expanding on that circle. So that's how we, that's how we recommend you do that. And the person who signs up with you, or signs you up, is there to help you do that. You know, present different ways for you to, to do that. And with me, we, my company does not do a party plan. <laughs> um, so I do a lot of, again, immediately my friends, my family, and because um, the company that I work with is in, a, in 11 different regions, I, I could reach out to friends and high school friends and college friends that live in other states, um, ask for referrals from them. I do a lot of local networking. I belong to Chambers of Commerce. I belong to WBOA. Um, I attend green meetings where people who are green-minded or might be interested in the product or the service that I provide. So I do a lot of networking that way. So basically, when you um, when you become involved in uh, marketing, sales marketing, how do you keep yourself motivated? Because you know, working out of your home, you're not working, you know, like at a, a corporate atmosphere. So how do you keep yourself motivated to continue keep yourself on? on schedule? Yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. Not saying, no, today Thank I'll you, keep Kim. my slippers on and not yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I do work in my bunny slippers, so it's <laughs> not really a problem. <laughs> Um, I've been an, I've been an entrepreneur for almost my entire career. I have I've, I have another business that I have, and I've I've I've, I've done that, and I've been a, net, a network marketer for 14 of those. Um, and I think most network mar marketing companies start talking about what is your why. That's one of the first things you define when you come into a net. Most all, all the all the companies I've ever been associated with, and others that I've heard of, they all talk about what is your why, and your why is exactly what you're talking about. It's like a it's a gray snowy day, and you know the last five people you've called like have hung up on you, years. right? Exactly <laughs> like this. And so, what is your why? So, if your why is I want to take this fabulous trip to Hawaii for three weeks, and I want to er earn enough money in the next year to do that. That's what I think of. I might put that on right in front and center on in my office, so that's what keeps me, you know. Or maybe it's I want to travel more in my retirement. So, you, you really define your why. You think about your why. You write your why down, and it may change over the years. But when things get really kind of not great, you think about your why. Mm -hmm. And your tr and your coach, your your up team, or or the people on your team should know your why as well. So you, when I call you and Carlene, I say, you know, I'm not sure I really, I'm cut out for this. I'm just not. And you say, Deb, you know, you're what about awesome. that? What about that three week trip to Hawaii that's really important <laughs> to you? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay. So that's, that's somewhat the way you do it. Yeah, I would say the same thing. Um, you have to have a little bit of an element of a self-starter and, you know, mm -hmm. be a little bit self-motivated, but there are also plenty of places to look. We have consultant forums and there's always Facebook, you know, like if people say, well, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z today and we see you playing around on Facebook, we'll, we'll get up there and say, hey, you should be working your business. Come back on after you've made those five calls or done yeah, those five, exactly. you know, whatever. So, yeah, um, it is important that the why is a huge thing for the direct sales as well so so I got my why and then I really like these lemons <laughs> <laughs> and how do you keep the lemons interesting so for you Sue you know you have a product that you sell how do you keep the parties interested as you you know go along keep them interesting and fun you know for the ladies so a lot of times I work directly with my hostess and I ask what is it that she wants and what is it that her friends want. You'll get women, groups of women who really just want to get together and talk and catch up. They don't want to play games, they don't want to be bothered with that. Um, but then you get the other ladies who are like, oh, how many games are we going to play? So you know, you have, you have kind of <laughs> an arsenal, feel out the group. right, yeah. you feel out the group ahead of time or sometimes you know, right there in front of you and you're like, all right, you know, time for a game and everyone gets all excited. and. Um, you know, chocolate speaks well to women, so that's usually a good prize, or free product is sometimes a prize. Um, we've actually been working on 
um, wine tastings and bringing wine into our um, group or mimosa tastings and bringing those into the parties and kind of making that um, you know who doesn't love gathering with their friends and having a little something to drink and um, people come to these parties usually knowing that there's going to be a product presented there's never any pressure though if you decide you come to the party and these are just not the lemons for you that's okay we're all right you, ha you came you had a good time and it may be that you have a conversation next next day right. about the lemons but that person might be interested so um, there's never any pressure to buy um, it's just really just about having a good time so that's how we kind of keep it fresh and what about, do you have anything to add to that? I know your business is a little it different, is different, but and you still like to have fun, <laughs> right? We do, we do, <laughs> we do. And actually, um, one of the things I love about network marketing is, is the, the people that I've met and people on my team. I mean, one of my best friends who lives in um, South Carolina, actually, I met through network marketing. We still talk once a week. We're not in the same business anymore, but we've, we've formed a, a lasting friendship, so. You know that's that's not a bad a uh, not a bad uh, not a bad part of the business exactly right? yeah. that's exactly. huge for me as well. Um, I don't have sisters, but I feel like I'm in a sisterhood. So if I'm having a bad day, sometimes we post things on our Facebook group and say we can't put this out on Facebook because for whatever reason there's someone else on Facebook we don't want to share it with, but we're willing to share it with our sisters and mm -hmm. we always get great feedback from that. So that's a huge thing for a lot of people. How do you decide what to bring with you, Sue? Mm -hmm. Um, again, I go back to my hostess. What are these ladies interested in? Are they interested in this segment? Are they interested in that segment? Um, sometimes I bring it all and leave some of it in my car because, you know, people don't, mm. sometimes an excuse to mm. not have a party will be, well, my house is so small. Well, you know what? You must have had a party for <coughs> something at some point. Keep it to the same number of people. I can fit my stuff on this much space if that's all you give me, or if you give me two tables, I'll fill that <coughs> up. So, um, it's really about, you know, what the, what the customers want. So can you tell us a little bit about how the compensation portion of, of this works? Sure. Um, one of the things you'll want to look for is if your company's been around for a while, there should be something called an income disclosure statement where they tell you at each level of the company about how much you would make. Um, one of the companies that I um, sell for has what the average is for that career position, what the high is, and what the low is. So you have a really good idea going in what you're getting into. Um, the other thing you want to know is when you're paying for your product, are you paying cost and keeping the difference between what it's costing you and the retail, or are you paying at retail, and at that point then usually twice a month the company will compensate you um, in commissions, so they'll pay you back. So those are a couple things to look for. One of the interesting statistics is that out of the women who make over $100,000 a year in the U.S., 82% of them are doing that with direct sales. That is crazy. Cool yeah. 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 So how well does this all work, Deb? How does this work? Well, I think um, we're we're primarily a referral based society. You know, we talk about, oh, it's what about that great restaurant we ate at last week, you should try it, or that movie was awful, don't go don't see it. it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so what network marketing does, I think, is capitalize on this sort of word of mouth marketing. Um, so so we're, as I said, since we're such a natural, you know, referral-based society, it, it works really well. And as I've already talked about the um, social media, you know, people are always recommending things on, on social media. So it really expands on that. And another thing is that um, for party plans, one of the things that really makes it work is it's a non-traditional way of shopping. And we've kind of turned into a society of non-traditional shoppers. So so many times we don't get in our cars and drive to the mall exactly. um, and do that kind of spending. We will would rather either do it online or um, some people would really rather do it after hours, gathered with their friends. Because what's better than, you know, we've, we've kind of gotten away from gathering with our friends and so now you can kind of do two things at once. You can gather with your friends and get a little shopping done at the same time. It's all, it's yeah, and with, with, mm -hmm. a, with a service that my company provides which is electricity, um, obviously people when, when, when people were trying to f find um, alternative rates that um, a lot of the other companies were, were you know, calling them at six o'clock at night or they were shoving things into their mailbox and people were just saying, hmm, huh, you know, because you know it's not something that they kind of trusted. But if I'm somebody you know, and you hear me talk about this, then you might be more inclined to say, I better take a better look at this. This might be something worth doing. Um, I think that's particularly true of the, of the particular, because uh, the statistics show that before um, 
when people were just getting these flyers and they were just getting things in the mail, the percentage of people who decided to choose a different electricity supplier was like 1%. You yeah. know, there just wasn't happening because people just didn't trust it. So now when you tell people it's like, you know, picking a car insurance company or a cell phone plan, they go, oh, okay, but they need someone to tell them that. So it's an education process in my, in my line, more than a, you know, it's not the party plan, but it's more of an education. And having it be someone you know who's, you know, selling a service or a product makes it much more personable and it's that yeah, no like you and trust. trust and, exactly. Yeah. No like and trust exactly. is the only way it is. Yeah. And you'll find that a lot of times people really, um, between the consultant and the customer, there gets to be a really good relationship. Like I have a woman that I met at a vendor event, so not even at a party, and she has now become a very good friend. She sent me a birthday card the other day for my birthday. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you really can form some really nice relationships. Yeah. And that's great when in today's society, social media is kind of taking away from all that and people are texting and chatting online and not right. talking face to face. Right. So this exactly. gives them the opportunity to, to do that in your line. Yeah, exactly. One of the, one of the, the taglines in, in network marketing is belly to belly marketing. And even with social media, um, that's really the best, that's the really the best way mm. to, to talk about your product or your service is getting, you know, right up there with people. So. Do you have any more questions? I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> or is there anything we didn't ask you ladies that you'd like to share with us? Um, I would say that for the party plan companies, one of the other things that you really want to look at is there usually are minimum um, requirements to stay an active consultant. So you'd want to know what those are up front. And usually it's mm -hmm. a certain dollar amount in a certain time frame. Um, and you just have to see if that's something realistic for you to do. And usually they're, you know, most of the companies that I've been involved in, they're very easily doable, even on a very part-time basis. So that's just another thing you'd want to take into account. Yeah, yeah, and I think what you would, would not want to do is, is um, go with a company that really requires a, a, a really high monthly quota. Because if you're going to take those three weeks in Hawaii, as I'm going to do, <laughs> then, then you might have a, you know, yeah. you might have trouble meeting that quota. So I think those are things that, um, when you're, if you're looking at a company, those are the kind of questions you need to ask yourself. So when someone is starting up selling their lemons, in Carlene's case, how long would you t say it would take you to really get the momentum and not oh, get discouraged? Yeah. You know, because I mean, you start right. any new business or project, and you know, you you go through the first two weeks and nothing's happening, and people tend to drop off. So what would you say to somebody just starting out, you know, what's a good time frame to give yourself and, you know, maybe don't quit your other job yet, you know, those type of aspects. Oh, do you want to take that? Take I will. Okay, um, I'll take it too. In, in my company, we have something called a fast start bonus because it's really important that people get the sense that they can at least make back their investment, mm. whatever that investment was, pretty quickly. This is not something that you're going to have to do for, you know, six months or a year before you actually make any money. So they give you an eight-week time period and they say okay if you want to get this many customers it's this much or this many customers so they a lot of a good company will have that kind of structure already built in so that the first you know first time out of the gate you have a plan you know you have a you have a mission if you will and how much you need to do and what you need to do and again it's it's personal you can you can go, you can walk slowly or you can you know Jump. Yeah, jump and <laughs> jog and, and so on. And, and that's the other part I like about this. It's a very democratic form of business. You know, you work hard, you reap the rewards. If you want to do it one hour a week, then you'll reap those rewards as well. So, Yeah, I would say the same thing. Um, for direct sales, it's usually three to four months is the time that we would recommend that you give yourself um, to really succeed. And you'll have someone working with you. And again, we have incentive programs right out of the gate. Um, do this in your first 30 days, do this in your next 30 days, do this in your third 30 days, um, and we're going to reward you with either cash or more free product, mm -hmm. because who doesn't love more free product? Um, and again, that really just gets your business off to a fast start, or a, you know, we have one program called Start Swell. Um, it's a great way to just get you going right out of the box. And at that point, you can kind of say, okay, you know what, I can handle this tempo, I want to keep this tempo up, or I need to scale it back a little bit. I mean, right. that was fine because I needed to get myself out there and see what I could do, but now I need to scale it back because I've got carpool, or I've got my kids' dance lessons, or I've got a work project coming up, so that you can scale back um, you know, as needed. But again, what, what Deborah said was fantastic. It's basically, you work, you get paid. And so if you work more, you get paid more. If you work less, you get paid a little less. And sometimes that's okay because we all have seasons in our life right. where this can really fit into yeah. nicely. Now with both of your companies, do you have the option to have people underneath you so you bring in sales consultants? 
underneath That's yourself. That's actually how you do well in the company. Okay. You form um, a team of distributors or, or um, team members underneath you, and then you get paid um, overrides on them. In other words, they're going to make money on what they sell or the service they mm -hmm. provide. You're also going to make a little money on them. And as that gets larger and larger, um, you, you make more and more money. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that's one of the beauties of, of network marketing is, is this idea of um, long-term residual income. Um, you know, it may get to be in 10 or 15 years that I really don't want to work as much as I am now and I can be sitting on that beach in Hawaii and I'll have an entire team underneath me that's still out there moving product and I'll still be getting paid. So that's, that's a big one. Yep, absolutely. Yes. Same answer. It's, it's encouraged that you build a team. It's not required, yeah, but right. definitely it is financially um, a benefit to to have a team of people with you, and then there's people who are like, "But I didn't get in this for management. I don't want. I don't want to manage a team." Um, and so you don't have you to. Don't I have mean, to, it's yeah. no, right. obviously That's something great. you don't have to do. You can obviously mm. choose to do that. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. That sounds like an extra bonus. Right. <laughs> Well, thank you both ladies, and thank you for joining us today for Learn from the Experts from the WBOA. And if you would like to find out any more information about our two guests that we had here, you can go to WBOA.org and find out more information about them, our organization, and other members. Thanks.